This is Off the Ice, the Nanaimo Clippers Hockey Show on 106.9 The Wolf. With the latest news on the Clippers and the BCHL, here's Dan Marshall. A great Christmas time stuff. We had Matt Kramer and Charlie Borick trying to sing <laughs> Jingle Bells last week on the show. Uh, that didn't turn out so well. Uh, no singing, no dancing of any kind. We have the 20-year-olds from the Clippers here with us. Yandy Caldas, Devin Brasso, Corey Renwick, Sheldon Rempel, Edwin Hookinson, and Cale Bennett. We're going to talk first-half memories, uh, junior hockey memories. This is the last season of Junior A for these guys, and we're just going to have some fun talking about it, but we're going to touch on Christmas time, too. It's getting close and talking about some family traditions that these guys are looking forward to. But let's get first word from the captain, Devin Brasso. You just went through a 10-game winning streak. Have you ever been through something that special in a regular season? Because playoffs are a different thing, but in a regular season before in your career. Um, I don't think so. I mean, the closest would probably would be my, my first year. We had a pretty good team there. Maybe went on a, you know, 9, 10, 11 game winning streak. I can't remember, but, uh, no, it's been, uh, it's been fun, you know, with the boys here and, uh, we, uh, you know, we kept saying, you know, like nine's a fluke, ten's a streak, kept going. And then, uh, thought 10 was a fluke, 11 was a streak, but it wasn't the case. Um, but, uh, no, it was fun while it lasted. Since you've been here, what is it about that West Kelowna team? It's just bizarre. Uh, I don't look at that team and go, well, they're, geez, they're better than Nanaimo. But in your time, Devin, it's been one tie against that team, and that's it. It's just a bizarre thing to me. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, I don't, uh, we haven't uh, beaten them or the past three years, which is kind of frustrating. Actually, I think we beat them the fir- my first BCHL game at the showcase there. Uh, my first year, but we got outshot like 45 to like 15. We still won like 6-5 or something, but uh, I don't know. It's been, uh, they've always had a pretty physical team, uh, although we're, we're pretty physical as well. It's just it's just one of those teams where we always uh, have a rough game against, and it's it's pretty frustrating. We knew that while we were getting in, into it on Saturday, but, uh, you know, it uh, didn't work out for us again. <laughs> Sheldon Rempel, what the heck were you thinking on Saturday? Get the puck beside the net, and all of a sudden it's on your stick like you're fooling around at ball hockey, and it's in the back of the net, the nicest goal that most of us have ever seen in our lives. What's going through your head when you're putting that one in? Uh, yeah, I guess it was just one of those you know, unique plays. Um, you know, I think Yanni over there <coughs> cycled it down low, and uh, you know, I was going to take it right to the net but I, I kind of saw the defenseman back off a little bit and gave me some time so um you know I had a little extra time behind the net there and kind of realized uh you know the ice was fresh it was early in the game kind of got a new tape job going um so you know the puck sticks a little bit better so I thought I'd you know try something new and luckily it worked out have Johnson and Walter seen that move in practice a few times because you don't just pull that out of your bag of tricks if you haven't done it a few times uh honestly I, I you know I don't work on it too much i mean i used to play a lot of pond hockey back back in my day um so i'd always be messing around kind of on, on the ponds and stuff like that uh doing that that kind of stuff i guess so um maybe just one of those moves that uh, i've worked on my whole life and was lucky enough to use it in a game it's Christmas time, and we're not going to focus too much on Christmas, but I want to get some traditions from you guys about what your plan is, what you're looking forward to. Cale Bennett, let's start with you. Heading home for Christmas, what are some of the family traditions that you're looking forward to that uh, you just you know it's coming every year and you get excited about it? Uh, nothing too special or different from other guys, I guess. Just uh, maybe Christmas Eve dinner. It's always fun to bulk up and get some food in you. Uh Christmas morning again, getting some cinnamon rolls in you. It's good. Uh, then leftovers after that. <laughs> uh, but Do you yeah, eat it all at your bill of toast? Uh, time to time, Dan. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I mean, it's just always good to see the fam after uh, it's been, this is my fourth year away from home now. So um, anytime I can get with them is special, especially around Christmas. So um, I'll take it. Let's go to the other end. Yanni Caldas, Christmas traditions. Uh, as you head home, what are you looking forward to here for Christmas 2015? Uh, nothing too special. I mean, it's the same thing every year. I just uh, uh, have a few dinners with uh, my family and just see my cousins and my friends and stuff like that. But I don't do anything too special. Just get together with everyone, see them as much as I can, and that's about it. Edwin Hookinson, there's nothing more stereotypical than... 
winter and Christmas in Saskatchewan, I would think. So what uh, are your plans for this year? Uh, well, there's, I don't think there's any snow in Saskatchewan right now, so it might be a little weird there. But, oh, give it uh, time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, skating at the local rink, that'll be nice. I haven't been there in a couple of years, unfortunately. And uh, just uh, seeing a lot of family I haven't seen in a few months will be, will be nice for sure. Corey, you don't have too far to go for Christmas. Uh, not too far at all, just down the road, and probably not too many white Christmases uh, in your in your lifetime here on on Vancouver Island. But so, what are you looking forward to at Christmas time? Yeah, I don't have uh, too far to travel, and uh, and just you know, just being around family and friends. You know, friends that went off to college and stuff like that. So it's nice to see all those people again. Let's go back to Sheldon and Devin, and Sheldon will give you next words. Uh, Christmas time for you. Any traditions that you're looking forward to? Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely going to be fun to obviously see uh, the family. Um, but yeah, Christmas Day, uh, usually, you know, get up, you know, open whatever gifts uh, we got under the tree. And then uh, usually my dad, me and my dad, my brother usually go uh, to the outdoor rink and, and play a little uh, Christmas hockey. So I think that's probably my main tradition. Is uh, the family all going to be trying the Rempel move that uh, is on YouTube right now at that Christmas hockey game? Uh, I think maybe uh, my dad, Garrett, might, but I don't know if he's got the mitts for that anymore. <laughs> Last word, Devin, for you, a Christmas tradition, anything looking forward to for this year? Um, well, I mean, like all the guys here, you're always looking to, uh, to see your family and friends, so it'll be nice to, you know, hang out with the brothers and uh, family. We usually uh, have our family Christmas party on the 24th um, for my mom's side of the family, and then... Um, we have a Christmas brunch with my dad's side of the family on the 25th, so that'll be always fun to to see them and uh, just, I mean, enjoy the time off. Much needed. So, Before we head to a commercial break, we're going to have you guys all back at the end of the year after the regular season is done, and we'll, we'll look back at junior acres a bit more. At that time, we'll, we'll talk about your first goals in junior, but for this segment, and there might be some guys that, that can't answer this, I want to hear about your first junior A fight. So you have to think back and want some details. If you remember the guy that you fought who it was against, Kale Bennett, you're smirking. So I have a feeling this could be a decent story. Your first Junior A fight, what can you tell me about it? I can tell you uh, nothing, Dan. <laughs> Closest you've been? Honestly. Anybody in practice that you jumped? Nope. Pretty peaceful guy, Dan. <laughs> wow, that was uh, not nearly as good as I was hoping. Uh, Edwin Hookinson, let's let's go to you next. Uh, first junior A fight. Uh, my first year in in Coquitlam, uh, Ryan Forbes uh, kind of dusted a guy from behind, and uh, it kind of looked like it was me. And so, kind of their tough guy came out and thought it was me, and kind of jumped me or asked me to fight, and I. Kind of was looking for my first fight that year, so I, I went for it, and uh, he was a pretty big dude and kind of a little more experienced than me, so he kind of did a number on me, but it was good to get the first one out of the way. Sheldon Rempel, there was a story last year, because I asked this question of last year's 20-year-olds, and Jake Jackson was bragging about how he took you on in practice last year, and that was his closest junior A fight. Uh, can you tell me about your junior A fight, or was that one against Jackson the closest? And you didn't have a chance to respond last year, but maybe tell us about that one in practice. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I uh, got in a little tussle with him. Um, I think uh, it was one of our battle practices where we just played games the whole time and keep score and. You know, the loser has to do a skate at the end, so it gets uh, pretty competitive. So, um, you know, I think our team was losing at the time, so I think the boys needed some energy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we I think I, I hooked him a little little too much, and, you know, he kind of grabbed me, and, you know, I asked him if he wanted to go, and, you know, we, we, we shedded the mitts, and nothing really came too much out of it. But uh, I think it was the same week, actually. We had a game, a uh, home game against Coquitlam, and uh, I actually just, just scored an empty netter. And on the way back to the bench to do the flyby, and uh, I don't know who it was, some, some guy on their team stuck their, stuck their stick out and blatantly tripped me right in front of their bench and kind of whole another uh, scuffle uh, kind of started. And uh, next thing you know, I, I grabbed a guy and 
And I gave him a couple sucker punches without him kind of realizing it. And uh, <laughs> kind of looked at him and then just threw the gloves off. And uh, I guess got in my first real real fight there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's I guess that's how it happened. Same week. So two fights in one week. And I think that's basically all I can say about uh, my fights in junior. Devin, is Sheldon allowed to fight? This year, if there's a situation, you know, he's a uh, leading scorer in the league. Is, is he allowed to? You're the captain. You can kind of put the clamp down yeah, on that. You're I'll, also a line mate. Is he allowed to? Yeah, I'll allow it. I mean, uh, things get pretty heated uh, at our billet house. He takes me down sometimes, so <laughs> I'm sure he'd do fine. I thought he was uh, might want it to go there against, uh, I think it was gold off merit. There is uh, lots of words thrown around, but uh, no, for sure, I'll allow it. I'd like to see it. It's fun. Corey, let's go to you next. Uh, first fight. Okay, so it was back in my 17-year-old uh, year, old year, and uh, we were playing Port Alberni, and we got we lost pretty bad, and it was at the end of the game, and I remember Chris Newton went and threw a hit late, and the buzzer went, and there was a big brawl in the corner, and I kind of stood outside the brawl and kind of waited for somebody to grab onto, and all of a sudden, their big kind of tough D-man came into the pile, and meanwhile, Jason Argy was skating and threw his water bottle at the guy's head. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to jump in and grab the guy from taking on Jason and all of a sudden his gloves came off and we chalked a couple and the refs got in the way and ended up getting a two game suspension from that one so yeah Devin first fight for you and you've had a few it was uh, it was at home against Port Alberni and I think the player um, I knew he was coming back for suspension I don't know if it was that night for hitting uh, Colton Dolan from behind there a few games back um, and uh, you know I think uh, everybody knew that someone was going to step up and fight, you know, defend uh, defend Colton. I didn't think it was me at the time, but uh, I know a few guys asked him to go, and he didn't want it, and uh, I just came out of the bench. There was a whistle right away, and I just grabbed him, and I said, uh, like, it's, you know, it's kind of payback time, and he said, okay, let's go. So it was a pretty open fight. Just I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest with you. And then, uh, you know, a little scuffle there, and uh, that was it. So I want to remember. Danny Callis, you get the last word here on the, the first Junior A fight. I got in one last year. <clears throat> I think you saw Bernie. Uh, Chris shoots. I don't remember. I think I finished my hit on the wall like after the whistle. It was a little late, and we were losing by a lot. So I was a little frustrated, and he came back at me and cross-checked me. So I pushed him, and he dropped his gloves pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Threw a couple, and it took me a while to realize I was in a fight. So then after, I dropped my gloves. But he hit me with a few before I was able to drop my gloves. I remember um, eating a couple and my visor popping off, and then I ate another one. And then, yeah, I started to throw a few, but uh, I definitely didn't win that one. All of these guys happened to be here last year, and I'm going to go around the horn, and maybe last year is obvious because it was a long playoff run, and I'm going to not allow you guys to duplicate the answer, but your best Nanaimo Clipper memory. I'm just thinking... There's a lot of things that could come out of last year's playoffs, but it doesn't have to be that. could be anything uh, in your Nanaimo Clipper career. Best Clipper moments. And I'll start at the far end. We ended with Yanni last time. Uh, so we'll begin with Yanni this time. Is there one moment, and whatever Yanni goes for here, you can't repeat it. When he beat Alberni in Game 7, I think that was the best moment last year. You know, my first uh, ever playoff series that I won. So it was obviously a really good feeling. And, yeah, that was probably the best moment of last year for me. You had a, a goal on a two-on-one in the Penticton series uh, in the last round in the finals last year. Was that uh, a standout moment for you? Yeah, that was definitely up there. I mean, that was one of the bigger schools, bigger goals I've ever scored, and uh, I was really excited to score that goal and, you know, help the team out. So, yeah, that was up there too. Devin, you've been here a long time, so there's, there's a lot of moments, I'm sure, that could be potential career highlights, but when you look back on your Clipper time, what is it so far? I think, I mean, Yanni talked about uh, Game 7 against Alberni. I'm going to have to talk about uh, game, game 7 against Powell. Um, just, I mean, score that goal. Um, I think it was, was it Meyer? I don't, I don't remember, but... Uh, it was Meyer that, uh, yeah. that got that one in Game 7. And, uh, just, I mean, just the reaction on the bench with the guys. Um, I just kind of took a moment there and uh, looked around, and all you see is smiles and everybody jumping up. And uh, I think we pretty much stood up for the rest of that game. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we got a pretty cool pick out of it, too. We, or a bench pick of all of us just jumping up in the air and so be able to keep that memory for a while. But uh, that's, that's got to be number one for me. 
Corey, you've been here longer than anybody, so you have the most to choose from. Uh, what is your career Clipper highlight? Being playing the finals against Penticton, that was just like a, a dream kind of final. I mean, um, and Rolly's overtime goal there, that was huge. And just just in the, the scene in the dressing room after the game, it was no feeling like they've ever experienced before. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was something else, that's for sure. What was it like in the playoffs being on a so-called fourth line with yourself, Houston, and Forbes and getting all the big goals that you guys had as, as fourth liners? And I, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but uh, just a depth chart-wise, that you guys had some massive, massive goals and limited ice time in that playoff run. Yeah, we really stepped it up in the playoffs there. And even in the finals, you know, going head-to-head against Tyson Jost in that line, it was, uh, you know, it was really fun to get a, a bigger role. Sheldon, career highlights for you, is it is it playoffs? Uh, you've had a five-goal game recently. You've had uh, a few hat-tricks, so three this year, a three-goal game, three-goal game, a five-goal game already. Does it come down to playoffs last year? A uh, lot to choose from. Yeah, you know, obviously that's my most memorable uh, memory, I guess, uh, doing the playoffs last year. I was, you know, one of the funnest uh, times of my life for sure, you know, going, going with the boys. But, you know, obviously those guys said that if I had to, you know, pick another one, you know, probably just go back to my first year, uh, you know, being from Calgary, uh, moving out here to BC, just, just going through all, all the road trips, moving into a billet family, you know, it's just, it's uh it's good memories, I guess, Um, you know, just experiencing a new way of life in, in BC here and, you know, kind of starting a new life as well. So uh, I'd have to say, you know, that my first year uh, was definitely a fun time, but, uh, you know, obviously my, my favorite memory was, was the playoff run last year we had. Your favorite memory wasn't the day you met Devin? <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're basically brothers. Um, you know, it was kind of, kind of a, you know, weird situation, I guess. Um, I think it was about a month into my, my, uh, first season, uh, you know, kind of looking for a new billet house and, you know, he, he texted me and, and, uh, said, you know, I think there's, there's room at my house. I, I didn't really know him too well. Um, and then, yeah, just, just forming, uh, the brotherhood, I guess has, has been so much fun the last, you know, two and a half years. Edwin Hookinson, I'm going to throw one at you. Uh, you were the leading playoff scorer for the Clippers in the 2013-14 first round. Uh, there, there's one for me, but I'm sure you've got something uh, a little more memorable than that. Uh, I, I mean, the the uh, the playoffs last year obviously a lot more memorable because that that first run there, my first year, wasn't very successful, but. These guys kind of took the the main ones out of there. Those were kind of my top three choices from the first three guys there. So, yeah, I mean that first year, uh, it was kind of it was kind of nice for me. I was kind of the seventh defenseman that year and kind of really stepped my game up in the playoffs. And it was kind of the first time when I really was kind of a contributor. Uh, so that was that was pretty good for my confidence. But I mean, uh, that was a, kind of a good personal time, but. Last year's playoffs were just kind of with the with the boys. It was it was a pretty huge uh, huge run we had, and that's that's what I'm definitely going to remember the most. Caleb Bennett, you get last word, and uh, the playoffs have been really picked over here. So if you've got a playoff story, there's there's not much left to choose from. Yeah, I guess they've taken all the good stories from playoffs. Uh, I guess that's my best memory. Um, other than that, maybe getting traded here. I guess last year. Uh, waiting, I don't know, it was a couple weeks, three weeks, I think, in Surrey. I was waiting around uh, playing uh, NHL on the uh, Xbox, so uh, hitting the gym every once in a while, and then I finally get the, the uh, call that I was traded here, and I was pretty pumped, and uh, just the first couple home games here, seeing just what a change it was and um, just how exciting it is to be here, so I guess I'll throw that at you. I'm going to get you guys to, and this is kind of like off the record, it's not anything anyone's going to hold against you. Tell some stories about the guys that you work with that work with you on a daily basis and you have for the last couple of seasons, head coach Mike Vandekamp, assistant coach Blake Clements, and trainer Rhett White. And let's start, because I think we're going to get two guys to tell a Mike Vandekamp story. Corey, I think you're going to get first words. Uh, your coach is known as being kind of a gruff guy. So I'm sure there's some pretty good Mike Vandekamp stories over your long time in the Nimo. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and we all know that uh, Mike doesn't have the best relationship with the refs. And <laughs> a couple of years ago, there was a, I think it was a bench minor call, and the ref went over to our bench and said, you need to send a player to the box. And 
Mike just looked at him with a dead stare and just said, we decline your penalty. And uh, I'd never seen that before. And I think the refs never heard that before either. And he, his reaction was priceless. And, and he, Vandy stood there for a while and just said, we decline it. And I didn't know what was going to happen, but eventually we sent a player over to the box and it was, it was a good laugh after. Do we have any takers on a, a Blake Clement story? Devin, I think you had one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Blake's a pretty funny guy, but uh, last last year we um, we were in Paul River. Um, so, we all, I mean, we always pretty much stay at a hotel uh, when we were in Paul River, that same hotel. And uh, it was uh, it was right around nap time. Everybody was pretty much sleeping. And uh, all of a sudden the uh, fire alarm goes off and wakes up everyone in the hotel and everybody comes out of their room and it's still going and we're wondering, you know, what's going on, what's going on. And uh, we found out that uh, Clemmy had, uh, was while ironing his shirt, I think. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know how if he even knows how to iron a shirt after that. But uh, he just set the alarm off there and, uh, you know, we had a pretty good laugh about it. And uh, I think he... Uh, $10, 10 or $20 fine for that. And we, the guys, uh, you know, let them know a little bit. So that was... Uh... Sheldon Rumpley, you wanted to uh, chat about your trainer, Rhett White. Now, remember, he's one of the most important guys yeah. on your team. I think it was either last year or my first year. I'm not sure. Um, uh, we were on the road. I think we played in Prince George, and we were, it was after the game. Um you know, we drive all night. Uh, we had a game the next day, I think, in Chilliwack. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we, we watched one movie, um, you know, on the on the main screen, so the whole bus can hear. Um, and then uh, it was probably, you know, one in the morning, and uh, Rhett tried to, well, he did. He fired up Transformers because he wanted to watch it himself personally uh, while all the boys were kind of, you know, Getting into 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 sleep time mode. Uh, I mean, we had a game the next day. Obviously, we needed our rest. So, uh, yeah, he had that going for probably 20 minutes, 20 30 minutes, and and no one was kind of saying anything. And, you know, I was I was sleeping on the floor at the time, and I was right by a speaker, and it was it was full blast, I'd say. Um, so it was safe to say it was pretty loud on the bus, and you know, I think everyone just bailed. So I I kind of finally stood up and you know uh, took one for the team and said something. Went to the probably the midway point of the bus and kind of yelled at him to, you know, I won't say what I said, but uh, turn the movie off um, and immediately responded uh, with, I won't say the response again, uh, basically telling me to shut up uh, and go sit down. So I was like, you know what, all right, I'll I'll uh, I'll do that. And kind of went down uh, back, back to my seat there and, you know, just, I guess, tried to battle through it. And probably about five minutes later, <laughs> He, uh, you know, he stood up and, and he, he started yelling again. He's like, he said, you know, fine, you guys want to sleep? All right. And then he finally turned it off and he was uh, pretty grumpy about it. And then I think he eventually turned it back on <laughs> within 10 minutes because he was so frustrated of not watching anything. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, that was probably up there for me. There's there's a couple more of the bus, but uh, I won't get into tonight. I'll give him a break tonight. So Corey Renwick, let's start with you. Uh, Second line center on a line that's going really well right now on a team that's going really well right now. Uh, do you think that uh, your hockey future is gonna gonna shape up soon, or is there is there some talk right now? Um, there's a few schools and you know talking to me, but uh, nothing nothing too serious right now. Just kind of waiting it out and you know just trying to just play my game and you know play to the best of my ability and uh, just see what happens. Kale Bennett, you're a guy that uh, I think is. Going to be one of those next guys to commit NCAA wise. I know in talking to your coaches that uh, there has been some talk with you. You can even break a story if there's something really imminent here. But uh, are, are you looking to uh, to get something done here? Uh, I wish there was a story to break, Dan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's 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 always talk going on. Um, I'm talking to Vandy every once in a while. My dad. Uh, um, yeah, I've been talking to a couple schools, but. Nothing is going to happen here soon. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, maybe in the uh, next month or two we'll see, but nothing uh, too soon here. 
Edwin, you just recently committed to, to Minnesota State, so your excitement level has to be pretty high to, to get that done, and uh, you can't think of a much bigger hockey hotbed, I think, than playing hockey in Minnesota. Yeah, it's really exciting. It uh, kind of came up suddenly after, you know, a couple of years of really hoping for something, and I was, yeah, I was really excited when uh, when I got the offer, and I'm really looking forward to next year. I mean, looking forward to finishing out this year strong and hopefully having a good run, but, you know, looking uh, looking ahead, I think it's going to be a lot of fun down there, too. Yanni, off to Cornell for next season, and I know there's a lot of fans worried that, oh, no, Yanni's going to go to Cornell this year, and uh, people were happy that you stayed one more year in the Nanaimo, but it's uh, nice to have that sorted out real early last year. Well, I guess not early last year, but late last season, so that uh, you've known for a long time what your future holds. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I was really excited uh, the day uh, my commitment actually uh, was 100% done after finally writing my SATs and doing all this stuff for my academics, writing all these essays and everything. So that was a long process, and I was just happy everything worked out. And, uh, you know, I had, to do a, I had to do a couple other things, like take two classes this semester. And, uh, you know, after, uh, after passing those, everything's good. So I'm really looking forward to going in next year. But uh, hopefully before I go in there, <laughs> we go far in the playoffs and hopefully even make it to the RBC Cup. Devin and Sheldon, I'll let you guys talk about this together. Uh, off to Clarkson next year. It's going to end up being seven years, maybe even seven years on the same line, but seven years as teammates. That rarely happens, even in, in the National Hockey League, something like that. So I would imagine that uh, there's a lot of good and uh, maybe uh, a lot of nattering that goes on when you think about your future together. Just talk about that, maybe the two of you together. Yeah, no, it was, uh, we were, I still remember, you know, the day that uh, we committed. Actually, well, before, we, I'm pretty sure we had uh, offers from pretty much all the same schools. And, um, you know, we it was kind of a, we kind of told ourselves, you know, let's not talk about it. Let's make our own decisions, not depend on each other. And uh, I remember one day I just went up to him and I said, you know, Rems, I think I'm, you know, I think I'm ready. I think I know which school I want to go to. And uh, he said, you know what, me too. And, uh we kind of both looked at each other, and uh, it was the same school, so that was kind of nice. And we uh, called their Clarkson coach together on speaker, which was, uh, you know, it was pretty. It's a pretty good memory to be able to, you know, commit to the same school with uh, your best buddy there. And uh, so, I mean, uh, I still remember you, Dan, on the first show too, so telling me seven years of reps. So <laughs> I'm looking really forward, to, <laughs> looking forward to those uh, next four years too. But uh, you know, I'll let him let him do the talking now. Sheldon, you're not even halfway done with this guy yet. Yeah, I know. It's, it's gonna. It's it's crazy how, you know, how long it's uh, it's been already, and how long, you know, it has to come. Um, but yeah, it was kind of weird, you know, in that process. Uh, you know, kind of the same schools were, were talking to us, and also, you know, had some offers on the table. It was like it was like a meant uh, package deal for some reason. So, um, yeah, um, it was obviously a fun process, and you know, I'm looking looking forward to to going to school. It feels like forever since uh we we did make that commitment and um you know there's just been some stuff behind the scenes that uh had to be fixed and um you know i'm just you know open and looking forward to to get to school next year but also you know finish out a, a good year here with uh the clippers you know it's, it's been a fun uh fun ride and i've enjoyed every second of it and you know hopefully we can have another run like we did last year but uh you know on the school standpoint it's exciting obviously um you know, being from the West my whole life, going going to live out in the East Coast to see how that is, um, kind of in Devon's area. So, you know, he's, he's told me some stories of, about how they live over there. So I kind of <laughs> get scared away a bit, but uh, no, it, it's it's all exciting and, you know, I can't wait for it. And I'm most veteran group and we'll have them back at the end of the regular season to talk more. And we'll talk about uh, a few different stories from the road and from their careers. Yanni Callis, Devin Brasso, Corey Renwick, Sheldon Rempel, Edwin Huckinson, Cale Bennett. Guys, Merry Christmas. Still three big games left before then. And Happy New Year as well. And uh, we'll chat again very soon. A big thank you to the 20-year-olds, Yanni Callis, Devin Brasso, Corey Renwick, Sheldon Rempel, Edwin Huckinson, Cale Bennett. They all joined us. Uh, this is their final year of junior hockey and still a lot to look forward to. Mike Vandekamp, the head coach and the general manager, joined us off the top. On behalf of Joe, this is Dan Solon from Off the Ice.
You've been listening to Off the Ice, the Clippers Hockey Show. Join us again next Monday night at 7 on Nanaimo's Rock, 106.9 The Wolf.